Welcome to DHN. I'm your host, Wade Teamer. Today, we're talking Algorand, XRP, and Stellar Lumens. They are at the center of attention right now, folks. Some big things going on in that ecosystem. We're going to talk about it. Global crypto market cap sits at $920 billion, only down about 0.25% in the last 24 hours. Volumes are down the most, though, 8% in the last 24, with the majority of that activity being in stable coins. That, to me, indicates everyone is just playing it safe right now bitcoin coming in at 19k down four percent for the week ethereum 1200 down about two percent as well xrp holding strong at 48 cent up two percent in the last seven days looking at the other coins in today's video xlm roughly at 12 cent down two percent on the week algo sitting at 31 cent having the worst of it down almost 10 percent over the last seven days maybe a buy window opening up soon Check out Quant 2 guys up 15% this past week, sitting at $156. Now, I was also looking at some of the other top gainers this morning. Casper Network, folks, up 18%. Definitely need to do another video on that project. Seems things are accelerating. Casper is one of those coins included in the new global payment system discussion. HBAR up 14% as well. Hello, future. Lastly, XDC actually outperforming XRP over the past week, up 3%. Let's jump into our first story, Algorand, an AI chain providing powerful Web3 risk controls for Algorand developers. Algorand is laying the groundwork for payments fraud prevention, FATF compliance, and risk-based approach to blockchain development for all its developers by enabling them on the onchain.ai platform. Virtual asset service providers and developers using Algorand can now be confident that their products are completely secure and and compliant from the start. Onchain.ai's blockchain intelligence and security capabilities have been an important backstop for regulators such as the SEC, other exchanges, hedge funds, and virtual asset service providers around the world. And this is true, folks. Back in August of 2021, the SEC signed a deal to investigate crypto transactions. This is coming from Forbes magazine. Blockchain analytics firm OnChain.ai has signed a deal with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to help monitor and regulate the turbulent decentralized finance industry. According to a company spokesperson, the initial value of the contract is $125,000 with five separate one year options totaling $625,000. So this is going to be a blanket effect as they go on to state that onchain.ai is now monitoring the 26 million plus wallets and hundreds of millions of transactions on the Algorand blockchain for suspicious activity and fraudulent transactions. Onchain can be accessed by both users and developers. This is so AI intelligence can be used to improve compliance checks, incident response, and the development of risk adverse applications. So I'm assuming that this might be the reason people have been shying away recently. I mean, I know you folks are still in. We know this is good news. Algorand has done a whole lot in the last couple of months, but this particular deal probably came off as a centralized move. But at the same time, this type of security and assurance is what's going to bring Algo to the mainstream. The SEC, for instance, has been talking about investor protection all year. Let that show you that it's not just a goal. It's a marketing ploy. Unnecessary for sure, but the promotion of Algorand can now begin that centers around the safety and security of digital assets, which I can assure you will be a good look. Now, OnChain was founded in 2018 by cybersecurity and enterprise software veterans from FireEye and Mondiant. They are backed by both Silicon Valley and Wall Street VCs and Selectic in the Berkeley Blockchain Accelerator. The company is trusted by 100 plus customers from 10 plus countries in various sectors that we mentioned a moment ago, virtual asset service providers, financial institutions, governments, and of course, the SEC. All those entities are now connected to 
Algorand. Got another Algo story for you though. EVM compatibility is on the way thanks to Milk O Media. They have just received a super grant from the Algorand Foundation to bring EVM compatibilities to the Algorand blockchain. In a quote, they state that through the super grant, the Algorand Foundation has provided critical support for Miko Media A1 to get off the ground and become a reality. This is from their foundation's director, Rob Korniak. We're thrilled to be the first project to bring rollups and EVM to the Algorand ecosystem. We're looking forward to sharing many of the engineering insights we've gained with the developer community in order to help drive further growth. We're excited to be a part of the overall ecosystem with the primary focus on bringing new capabilities and experiences to all Algorand users. So what we have here, guys, is a layer two rollup solution that uses a novel data availability protocol and was specific created to add EVM compatibilities to the Algorand blockchain. This rollup is now available on the public test net with the main net launch expected later this month. What this will do for Algorand is increase its interoperability. This now means that EVM compatible apps can be built on Algorand and vice versa. This is something that is continuing to occur, guys. Each time you hear the word EVM compatibility, I think it's a shot at taking down Ethereum, which seems to be the biggest dog in the yard. So this is going to be big. Now, I also found this interesting. Miko Media is backed by investors such as Archetype, Arrington Capital, Circle, and Coinbase Ventures. So Algorand is pulling some massive hitters, folks. Before we go into our next segment, though, two things. Our next lesson for the DigiHustle University is going to focus on layer ones and layer twos. It's surely going to give you a much better understanding of the importance of this news. Second, spoiler alert, Algo did make the Elite Eight for 2023. So jot that down. Next, let's talk XRP. Another two piece for you here. XRP expands into France and Sweden and Ripple Partner has been admitted into the Digital Pound Foundation. I think that's the biggest headline. Let's start there. The Digital Pound Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to the development and implementation of the digital pound in the UK, has welcomed Ripple Partner Modular to its membership community. Modular, a payments platform, will join the Digital Pound Foundation's payments and use cases working group, taking the lead in both groups and advancing the foundation's mission and thought leadership in these critical areas. Modular announced its partnership with Ripple in February of this year to enable payments in the UK and Europe. The two leading fintechs have joined forces in a partnership that they believe will make it easier for businesses to conduct international real-time payments using RippleNet technology. Modular is also one of the few non-bank entities that has direct access to the Bank of England, allowing the payments platform to settle funds at the central bank. This, of course, is going to be big, guys. Ripple is one of the founding members for the Digital Pound Foundation. Now they have another ally in the cabinet. Can anyone say corporate takeover? On a serious note, though, gaining influence in Europe right now is a very good thing. I have been keeping my eye on the MICA legislation, which is their universal crypto rule book. It's steadily creeping towards approval. Once it does, it's going to light a fire under the crypto economy in Europe. This will include France and Sweden. Ripple is on a roll, folks. They have just announced a strategic partnership with Paris-based payment provider Lemonway Tuesday, October 11th. This is going to use Ripple XRP powered solution on demand liquidity to enhance its treasury payment processes. Lemonway is a pan-European payments institution dedicated to marketplaces, alternative finance platforms, and other companies seeking payment processing, wallet management, and third-party payment in a KYC regulated framework. It has a payment solution that is trusted and used by over 1,400 European marketplaces, including 200 crowdfunding platforms. Founded in 2007 by Sebastian Berlate, it received an ACPR payment institution license and a European passport back in 2012. Its offices are located in Paris, London, Madrid, and Hamburg, Germany. Now, according to Ripple's press release, this partnership 
concert with Lemonway is coming at a time when France has been demonstrating itself to be forward thinking when it comes to embracing the potential of crypto technology. This is going to drive operational efficiencies by eliminating the need for Lemonway to pre-fund accounts abroad, giving them the opportunity to use previously trapped pre-funded capital to grow and scale their businesses. Again, folks, once that mica kicks in, it's going to be mainstream XRP parties popping up everywhere. Now, in addition to this, Ripple has also added another partner in the form of Jot, which specializes in payments between Sweden and Thailand. This partnership is going to allow them to provide instant and cost-effective retail remittances through ODL supported by Tranglo. Got a whole video talking about Ripple and Tranglo. Both companies will also be working together to utilize Ripple's services. So that's going to be massive, guys. Next, we're talking XLM, folks. They're hosting Meridian 2022 right now. And as we got closer to this event, I just had a feeling Stellar would make some very big announcements. Sure enough, that's what they did. Starting with Novati announcing that an Australian dollar-backed stablecoin, the AUDD, would be launching on the Stellar Network as of November 1st. Once live, the AUDD's Stellar blockchain functionality means that users all over the world will be able to use the AUDD to make payments and trade with other Stellar-based tokens via the on-chain decentralized exchange. Users with Stellar accounts will be able to use any Stellar-enabled wallet to access the AUDD. So, this is going to include any MoneyGram applications. But here's what's even cooler. You go over to Australia, folks, and the media is starting to pick up the story there. In reading this article, I learned a few more things. This staple coin is also going to run on a couple other chains. Courtesy of stockhead.com.au, it's not the first AUD-backed stablecoin to hit the market. For example, True AUD is issued on the Ethereum network by Trust Token, and the Australian dollar token was created by Sergey Serkinov's Chrono.Tech company. Both of them are Austrack registered stablecoin solutions and are currently in use. And then we have TAU's XAUD stablecoin and then ANZ's $1DC stablecoin, which is being piloted by the federal government to help collect taxes and is currently under a regulatory review. And then, of course, we have to mention the Reserve Bank of Australia, their central bank digital currency research. However, the difference with AUDD appears to be that it is the first Australian dollar stablecoin to go live on the Stellar blockchain. They continue to state that Novati representatives confirmed to Stockhead today via email that the AUDD is the new name for the previously announced AUDC stablecoin. The stablecoin was renamed due to a trademark issue. However, because it had already registered the AUDD alongside the AUDC, AUDD was obviously the logical replacement. They also stated in that email that the AUDD is a multi-chain solution, which means that it will enable and operate on multiple blockchains. Following its launch on the Stellar chain, further announcements regarding the AUDD's integration on the XRP ledger and Ethereum are to be expected. In a quote, they stated as part of their respective commitments to the launch, Stellar and Ripple are providing extensive technical support to Novati. Our intention is to add AUDD to additional blockchains on a case by case basis. The company clarified, adding, we believe Novati's ASX listing status, extensive regulatory license and industry longevity will provide confidence in AUDD in comparison to other offering so it's usually xlm versus xrp but here we have an example of both of them coming together on a very powerful use case shout out to nobody for this one folks next we have soroban smart contracts hitting the future net which is essentially their test net the Stellar Development Foundation announced today that Soraban, the Stellar Network's native smart contracts platform, is live on the FutureNet, an incentivized testing environment for the first wave of developers. Along with this, they announced a $100 million fund to help developers build on Soraban. 
Real quick, Sorban brings Turing complete smart contracts to the Stellar network, which is built on WASM and Rust, which are coding languages. Sorban on Stellar introduces a whole new type of smart contracts platform to the market that is purpose built, built to perform, and will drive use cases built around expanding access to financial services. These smart contract updates are important to take note of because smart contracts means more functionality. More functionality is going to, of course, bring in more apps. Those apps will in turn bring in more adoption. And with the move they just made in Australia, Soraban is only going to make Stellar faster and more user friendly in the long run. Now, lastly, we need to talk about this story posted about a week ago. The World Economic Forum launches Crypto Sustainability Coalition with Stellar Lumens, Avalanche, and others. You'll remember that last year, the World Economic Forum published a report on crypto, and they had detailed Stellar Lumens, XRP, Algorand, Celo, uh, Cardano, the report with all of those in it, as some of the best performing blockchains in the space. Now they're ramping up the climate narrative again with the creation of this crypto sustainability coalition. This new initiative by the World Economic Forum has created different working groups, which will investigate three subjects relating to blockchain, crypto and its usage. One of these points has to do with the energy consumption of these technologies. The initiative will also work on how these technologies can impact the climate in the future. I first came across this story when I found out that Energy Web was a part of this coalition. As you can see, this coalition already has some heavy hitters on it. Accenture, Circle, Energy Web Foundation, you have Near Foundation on here, Solana, Ripple, and Stellar, and the Sustainable Bitcoin Protocol, which I believe is the organization that Chris Larson is a part of. I'd have to double check that. But the way this article ends should show you how deep the World Economic Forum is already into this crypto thing. Another major concern for the Crypto Sustainability Coalition is how Web3 technology can advance and aid in the decarbonization of current activities. Mining and other decentralized activities could be among these applications. A few months ago, BlackRock talked about using Energy Web for the verification of Bitcoin mining. A few months prior to that, Chris Larson came out and stated the same thing, a need for that same type of technology. A third topic will be standardizing and incorporating carbon credits into blockchain technology. This will increase transparency in the issuance and management of these instruments. I think I spent a full week talking about that crypto climate report from the White House. We found out that both Ripple and Energy Web could provide solutions that they are looking for. The main issue, though, was the asset tokenization side. Stellar is one of those chains that specialized in tokenized asset issuance. This last one kind of scared me. The World Economic Forum seeks to leverage various crypto technologies for various purposes. The World Economic Forum collaborated with Chainlink in 2020 to build a bridge between legacy systems and blockchain environments. What did Chainlink just do with Swift this past week? Both Swift and Chainlink Labs are partners with the World Economic Forum. Folks, I don't think that was a prediction. I think it was a spoiler. With that, that's all I got for this one. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. While you're at it, of course, don't forget about the DHN Crypto Journal for 2023. Also, our Diamond Hustle members get access to exclusive crypto documentaries and education. Just click the join button under this video to learn more. To all my digital hustlers worldwide, you know what I'm going to tell you. Have a great day. Have a prosperous day. And most importantly, if that money is digital, so is the hustle. Ms. Dixon, I'll see y'all um, in the next Colleagues video. on the House Financial Services Committee are working on a bill to regulate stable coins, as we know. Uh, how would that legislation interact with our bill, uh, giving the CFTC the authority to reg regulate digital commodities? Thank you, Senator. That's, uh, it's, it's such a great opportunity to be able to have these bills work together. Having a clear definition of what truly is a stable coin is so important. We already see in this bill there's a process for listing stable coins, but it's really important because a lot of what we read about in the early days of the summer focused on things that were labeled stable coins but were not one-to-one -one backed with fiat, didn't have audit requirements, didn't have the transparency that we think is important not just for American consumers but also for business who's, who want to leverage these stable coins as I mentioned in the MoneyGram example. 
So creating that very clear definition of what is a stablecoin, holding those assets in a secured financial depository account, making sure that you can't have, that if you do have around the bank, that there's not gonna be a problem for the constituents that choose to get their money out. These are all really, really important pieces that we think need to be addressed, and we see not just the, the bill in the House, but also the proposal that Senator Gillibrand and Lemus put together with respect to um, of stable coins and defining stable coins. We'd love to see the idea that we continue to have innovation in this space, but it is regulated innovation around stable coins.